Hello, my name is Miti, and I'm a part of the Exacto Research Team. Thank you for tuning in to another ISTQV course overview. Just like with our foundation level course, this series is in no way a replacement for the ISTQV Certified Tester AI testing syllabus. But we hope it will provide you with a good idea of what this professional certification program is about. As always, we have tried breaking it down for you to help you overcome your fears and successfully pass the exam. So, please do rely on the official syllabus in your preparation for the exam. But we'll be happy to see if you use this course as a supplement. The Certified Tester AI Testing Certification is designed for anyone involved in testing AI-based systems and or AI for testing. This includes testers, test analysts, data analysts, test engineers, test consultants, test managers, user acceptance testers, and software developers, as well as anyone who would like to get a basic understanding of testing AI-based systems and or explore ways to use AI for testing. To gain this certification, candidates must hold the Certified Tester Foundation Level Certificate. The term artificial intelligence AI was coined in the 1950s by John McCarthy, and it refers to the objective of building and programming intelligent machines capable of imitating human beings. Since then, it has evolved significantly, so here is a more modern definition that captures the concept of AI. It's the capability of an engineered system to acquire, process, and apply knowledge and skills. So it is safe to say that the way people understand the meaning of AI depends on their current worldview. For example, the expert systems of 1970s and 1980s incorporated human expertise as rules, which could be run without the expert being present. One of the most prominent examples of such machines was Caduceus, a medical machine capable of diagnosing up to 1,000 different diseases. These were considered to be AI then, but are not considered as such now. Before the 1997 Deep Blue vs. Kasparov rematch, the mere idea of a computer system beating a human in a six-game match would be mind-boggling, and definitely an indication that AI is a reality, and that it happened. But once again, the brute force approach implemented in that system then is not considered by many to be true artificial intelligence now. Which makes people wonder and say, if I beat the world chess champion, I'd be regarded as highly bright. But when a machine does something intelligent, it ceases to be regarded as intelligent. Although it's quite possible that a more rational way of explaining this phenomenon is admitting to ourselves that what we thought could only be done with strong AI could actually be achieved through weak AI. The changing concept of what constitutes AI is known as the AI effect. As the perception of AI in society changes, so does its definition. It's the same as saying that if a problem is solved using AI, the problem is no longer a part of the AI focus area. Solving an AI problem makes it lose its mysterious luster and moves it from unattainable to mundane. And as a result, any definition made today is likely to change in the future and may not match to those from the past. Let's just hope it won't change by the time this course is over. I have already mentioned strong and weak AI, so let me explain what that actually means. AI is usually broken down into three categories. Number one, narrow AI or weak AI, where the systems are programmed to carry out a specific task with limited context. They can analyze and interpret data with astonishing accuracy, accomplishing it much faster than humans. They help us make better data-driven decisions and, more importantly, relieve us from monotonous tasks. Currently, this form of AI is widely available. For example, game playing systems, spam filters, self-driving cars, and voice assistants. When it comes to testing, narrow AI can assist us in generating test cases, planning the overall test process, as well as improving the defect report quality for QA analysts. It can also be used in intelligent capturing and for test recognition without human intervention. With the help of natural language processing and sentiment analysis. Next comes general AI, also known as strong AI or true AI, and it describes universal systems capable of performing any intellectual tasks that humans can perform. These types of systems will also be able to reason and act based on consciousness, emotions, and critical thinking. It's the holy grail for all AI researchers, but unfortunately, no general AI systems have been realized so far with some researchers voicing their opinions that it's not feasible at all. And then there is super AI. 
Philosopher and expert on artificial intelligence Nick Bostrom defines superintelligence as an intelligence that vastly exceeds the cognitive capacity of human intelligence in all fields of knowledge. Here, systems are capable of replicating human cognition, or general AI, make use of massive processing power and access all knowledge, for example, via the World Wide Web. The point at which AI-based systems transform from general to super AI is commonly known as technological singularity. If you want to learn more about the possible development of super AI and what it might lead to, we recommend reading Bostrom's book called Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, and Strategies. In a conventional computer system, the software is programmed by people using constructs such as if, then, else, and loops. It is relatively easy for humans to understand how the system transforms inputs into outputs, because everything is rule and algorithm based. Although, this statement better reflects a trivial system rather than complex market data juggernauts, which exchange and analyze huge flaws of data. AI systems, on the other hand, have an observe and learn approach. Here, patterns in data are used by the system to determine how it should react to new data in the future. For instance, a text processor designed to identify news about software defects is trained on a set of news articles about software bug reports. Artificial intelligence independently determines which data, patterns, or features can be used to identify error messages. These rules are then applied to new news articles to determine if they contain such information. AI can be implemented using a wide range of technologies, such as reasoning techniques, examples of which include rule engines or semantic reasoners, which draw logical assumptions from facts and axioms. Deductive classifiers, unlike rule-based engines, which can only apply triggers like if-then, when a condition is not met, these classifiers seek to mimic human deductive logic to produce new information. Case-based reasoning, which is the process of resolving new problems based on the outcomes of similar past problems. And procedural reasoning, which is a framework that operates with knowledge areas or predefined skills and instructions in order to achieve given objective. And then there are machine learning techniques, which can be split into three categories. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Let's look at the most common examples of these algorithms. The first one is supervised learning. Here, the algorithm creates an ML model from label data during the training phase. The label data, which usually consists of pairs of inputs, for example, a bug report with a bug label versus any other text with a not a bug label, is used by the algorithm during the training to deduce the link between the input data and the output labels. During the ML model testing phase, a new dataset is applied to the trained model to predict the output. The model is then deployed once the output precision level is satisfactory. Supervised learning helps with classification and regression problems, such as determining what category a bug report belongs to that describes an actual bug or just containing a user's opinion about the specific functionality, or predicting the time it takes to fix the bug. The models presented in the syllabus can be divided into three groups, linear models, Bayesian models, and decision tree algorithms. Let's look at a few examples for each group. Linear models. Linear regression is a model reflecting linear relationship between a response and one or more explanatory variables. It is used to predict continuous values. Logistic regression is a modification of linear regression, which describes a process of modeling the probability of belonging to a certain class given an input variable. Support Vector Machine, or SVM, is a model that maps objects from training data to points in space in such a way that increases the gaps between classes. Bayesian models are statistical models where you can use plausibility to represent all uncertainty within the model. In other words, they specify probabilistic models and solve problems when less than the necessary information is available. Examples of Bayesian models include Naive Bayes, 
multinominal naive Bayes, complement naive Bayes, etc. Decision tree algorithms. Decision trees are flowchart-like structures in which each internal node contains a decision rule. Each branch is a solution, and each end node represents a target value. Random forest is a learning method that operates by constructing a multitude of decision trees during training. Random decision forests correct for decision trees' habits of overfitting to their training set. Then there is unsupervised learning. Here, the algorithm creates an ML model from unlabeled data during the training phase. The unlabeled data is used to deduce patterns in the input data during the training. After that, it assigns inputs to different classes. This is followed by testing phase, where the train model is applied to a new dataset. The model is deployed once the output precision level is considered to be satisfactory. For instance, this approach helps with clustering, which is when the problem requires the identification of data similarities that allow them to aggregate tens of thousands of parameters received from the exchange system into several groups to make it easier to understand the causes of system failure. Clustering algorithms solve the task of grouping a set of objects in such a way that objects in the same group are more similar to each other than to those in other groups. It's the main task of exploratory data analysis and a common technique for statistical data analysis. These algorithms include k-means, which attempts to cluster the data into a predetermined number of groups by minimizing the distance from the cluster center to the objects, dbscan or density-based partial clustering of applications with noise, operates on data density. The basic concept of this algorithm is to find areas of high density, which are separated from each other by the areas of low density. Another issue unsupervised learning aids us with is association. This is when the problem requires dependencies to be discovered among data attributes. For example, a bug label recommendation based on its description. The last one is reinforcement learning, which is an approach where system learns by interacting with the environment in an iterative manner. There is no training data. The agent is rewarded when it makes a correct decision and penalized when it makes an incorrect one. Robotics and autonomous vehicles are examples of applications that use this approach. This approach can be implemented using Markov algorithms, dynamic programming, and other more sophisticated algorithms. Also, genetic algorithms and neural networks are two other algorithm types that need to be mentioned. First is genetic algorithms which are commonly used to generate high-quality solutions for optimization and search problems by relying on bio-inspired operations such as mutation, crossover, and selection. They can be classified as supervised learning or unsupervised learning, as they are applied over algorithms belonging to one group or another one. And secondly, neural networks, which attempt to mimic the human brain by constructing a system of connected units or nodes called artificial neurons. They can be used in supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning tasks. All aforementioned algorithms can be applied to a variety of tasks. For example, they can implement fuzzy logic, where the truth value may be any real number between 0 and 1. It is used to handle the notion of partial truth, this is very similar to human reasoning. For example, when a tester assigns a priority level to a bug, he answers the question, does this bug need to be fixed quickly? Usually, it is not a yes or no question. We set the priority in a range from the highest or 1, meaning it needs to be fixed very fast, to the lowest or 0, meaning it can be left for later, with intermediate values in between. One of the most common examples of AI-based systems that you have definitely seen is search algorithms and recommendation systems. The most obvious way search engines use AI is to rank web pages, videos, and other content. AI-based systems typically implement one or more of these technologies. AI was once limited to a close community of leading researchers, but times have changed and due to the development of various libraries and frameworks, it has become more user-friendly, with more and more people going for it. 
Basically speaking, AI framework access is no longer limited to nerds and geniuses. There are many AI development frameworks available, some of which are focused on specific domains. The framework selection may also depend on particular aspects, such as the programming language and the ease of use. For example, if you use Python, then you may also be interested in Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow for neural network implementation, or Scikit-Learn for classical machine learning algorithms. The frameworks support a range of activities, such as data preparation algorithm selection and compilations of models to run on various processors, such as central processing units, CPUs, graphical processing units, GPUs, or cloud tensor processing units, TPUs. AI requires appropriate hardware. For instance, a model that performs speech recognition may run on a low-end smartphone, although access to cloud computing may be needed to train it. A common approach is to train the model in the cloud and then deploy it to the host device. ML typically benefits from hardware that supports the following attributes. Low precision arithmetic, for example using 8-bit instead of 32-bits, is sufficient for ML. Two, the ability to work with large data structures, and three, massively parallel processing. General purpose CPUs provide support for complex operations that are not typically required for ML applications, at the same time providing a few cores. As a result, their architecture is less efficient for training and running ML models when compared to GPUs, which have thousands of cores and which are designed to perform massively parallel but relatively simple processing of images. Consequently, GPUs typically outperform CPUs for ML applications, even though CPUs typically have faster clock speeds. For small-scale ML work, GPUs generally offer the best option. Some hardware is specifically intended for AI, such as purpose-built tensor processing units and system-on-a-chip. These AI-specific solutions have multiple cores, special data management, and the ability to perform in-memory processing. They are most suitable for edge computing, while the training of the ML model is done in the cloud. AI components, such as ML models, can be created within the organization, downloaded from a third party, or used as a service. Although a hybrid approach is also possible. When ML is used as a service, access to ML model is provided over the web in order to perform data preparation, model training, evaluation, tuning, testing, and deployment. Third-party providers offer specific AI services, such as facial and speech recognition. This allows individuals and organizations to implement AI using cloud-based services, even with insufficient resources. In addition, these ML models are likely to have been trained on a larger, more diverse dataset available for those who have recently moved into AI market. Make no mistake, ML models can be expensive, consuming large amounts of human and computing resources. So a cheaper and often more effective alternative is to use a pre-trained model. This provides similar functionality and is used as a basis for creating a new model that extends the functionality of the pre-trained model. This reduces the risk of consuming significant resources, with no guarantees of success. It is also possible to take a pre-trained model and modify it to perform a different requirement. This is known as transfer learning and is used on deep neural networks in which the early layers of the neural network typically perform basic tasks, whereas the later layers perform more specialized assignments. This eliminates the need to train the early layers. The later layers are then retrained to handle the unique requirements for a new classifier. In practice, the pre-trained model may be fine-tuned with additional training on new problem-specific data. The effectiveness of this approach largely depends on the similarity between the function performed by the original model and the new one. Using pre-trained model, of course, carries some risks. These include They may lack transparency compared to the internally generated ones. The level of similarity between the function performed by the pre-trained model and the required functionality may be insufficient. Also, this difference may not be understood by the data scientist. Differences in the data preparation steps used for the pre-trained model when originally developed and the data preparation steps when this model is deployed 
may impact the resulting functional performance. The shortcomings of a pre-trained model are likely to be inherited by those who reuse it and may not be documented. A model created through transfer learning is highly likely to be sensitive to the same vulnerabilities as the pre-trained model on which it is based. Note that several of the aforementioned risks can be easily mitigated by having a thorough documentation available for the pre-trained model. The proposal of the European Parliament and of the Council focuses on harmonized rules of AI, stating that this is a fast-evolving family of technologies that can bring a wide array of economic and societal benefits across the entire spectrum of industries and social activities that could provide competitive advantages to companies and the economy. In noting so, it outlined the following AI technologies and approaches. Machine learning approaches, including supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and deep learning. Logic and knowledge-based approaches, including knowledge representation, inductive programming, knowledge bases, inference and deductive engines, symbolic reasoning, and expert systems. Statistical approaches, Bayesian estimation, search and optimization methods. The Joint Technical Committee of ISC and ISO on Information Technology releases international standards about AI as well. For example, an AI subcommittee ISO IC JDC 1 SC 42 was set up in 2017. In addition, ISO IC JDC 1 SC 7, which covers software and system engineering, has published a technical report on the testing of AI based systems. Standards on AI are also published at the regional levels and the national levels. Also, General Data Protection Regulation GDPR, set EU-wide rules with regards to personal data and automated decision-making. It includes requirements to assess and improve AI system functional performance, including the mitigation of potential discrimination and for ensuring individuals' rights to not be subjected to automated decision-making. The most important aspect of the GDPR from a testing perspective is that personal data, including predictions, should be accurate. This does not mean that every single prediction made by the system must be accurate, but that the system should be precise enough for the purposes for which it is used. Standards on AI are also published by industry bodies. For example, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, or IEEE, is working on a range of standards on ethics and AI, although many of these standards are still in development. When it comes to safety-related systems, regulations become even more paramount. For example, regulatory standards ensure that it is illegal to sell a car in some countries if it includes software that does not comply with ISO 26262. Standards are voluntary and only made mandatory by legislation or contract. However, many users of these standards implement them to benefit from the expertise of the authors and to create higher quality products. And that is it for this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. In the next one, we'll be talking about Chapter 2 of the ISTQB Certified Tester AI Testing Syllabus. As always, let me remind you that we do have a lot more interesting videos on our channel, so feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!